All right, so like I, I think I mentioned previously, I wanted to do um, the Transylvanian Gambit there, rather uh, uh, Romania entering uh, the Great War using the Krieg scenario, and that way hopefully I can get some turns in before Paul Hederer shows up on the live stream and try to compare it with uh, his upcoming game, uh, 1916 um, Prelude to Blitzkrieg. I'm using my old counters. I don't even have the Romanian counters anymore. I gave them away, so there's I can't I can't even do it anyways. I'll try to go over a few things. Like I said, uh, mentioned before, I'll pop it in the links as well. Justegard played this. Thank goodness I watched it again because I, he was mentioning something about engineers uh, needed to be crossing, like to attack across the Danube if you're using non-artillery units. And I was like, what in the world is he talking about? I can't find that anywhere in the rules. But it's in the standard rules, so it's not in the Eastern Front module. You had to, I had to actually go in the, into the back of the Sterling edition to find them. So that's one big wrinkle for um, attacking across the Danube. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Hopefully I'll go through the whole thing as I play through and, and I'll, I'll try to explain a few things. I did want to go through primarily though um, just what the decisive victories are for each side because that's basically what's going to be driving what I'm doing. And at first I thought this is probably not going to be a very enjoyable game due to the fact that most of the, I don't think you can see, I'll try to um, pan a little bit, but most of the um, strength points are like one or two or whatever. And with the, um, and with the punishing train and whatnot, the odds of any major movement or whatever is not going to happen. It's not going to be a big combat fest that way. Except there's a ton of reinforcements coming. I took a look at the reinforcement schedules and it's like, whoa. Okay, let's get into the um, the victory conditions or I'll try to find out. And there's also the other thing is the river flotillas. Um, I'm using uh, two little wooden tokens here for the Romanian um, uh, river flotillas. And the Austro-Hungarians have five. I'll try to bring it down a little bit. Hold on. So you can see a little bit more of the Danube maybe. Hold on. Holy cow. Sorry, I had to make sure the tripod was so precariously close to the edge. Yeah, I'll zoom in a little bit. And I'll talk to you about the um, the victory conditions. Um, still, like I'm, I'm going to certainly be reading the rules over and over again, like with the river flotillas and a few things to make sure that I get things right. What I know about the river flotillas so far is as, as long as there's not an enemy on your side of the terrain kind of thing as you're going across the river you're okay to I can, uh, basically river flotillas are, have uh, unlimited movement they also have this interesting little thing called interdicting fire and it's two hexes out from where they are so you essentially have almost got like four hexes here and it's any enemy unit trying to cross the Danube um, in, the, in these things I can uh, attack them and I get I think triple um, my uh, my strength points, which is uh, is pretty nice. The thankfully I took a look. It starts off on the last turn of uh, August 1916 and ends uh, midway through December. Um, what am I going to say here? I'm kind of getting slowly oh yeah, back to the river flotillas. The Austro-Hungarians have five, the Romanians have two. So I'm just going to say thank goodness that the um, the Romanians actually do move first, well, the Entente move first, because there, there's some Russian troops up at the, up at the top, uh, mostly cavalry right now. Um, because I, I'm going to try to move some people out of the way, when you, especially when you see the victory conditions. But for the Austro-Hungarians, when I get the, the river flotillas, I want to control the Danube. And if I've got five to their three, uh, to their two, and they've only got a six total strength points, and I can gang up on them, the only people that can destroy uh, or... If, um, damage river flotillas or other river flotillas. I'm like, okay, I want to have control of the Danube. I'm going to go and um, nail those little buggers as, as quickly as possible. Knowing that, I may have to start inserting uh, Romanian troops along the Danube um, to cause that to not happen, if that makes any sense. Like, I, I'm going to have to try to protect my river flotilla, so I'm going to have to ensure that I um, can get... Um, should that be... Oh, I should have him on the side of the Danube. Well, not really. No, no, I want him on that side of the Danube. 
Uh, so I've got to start thinking though those type of things. Uh, yeah, the as you can see, there's lots of mountain terrain. Well, obviously, there's the Transylvania Mountains and whatnot up there. Um, there's lots, lots of things to go. So let's talk about the victory conditions. Essentially, ooh, Jesus, sorry. Essentially, the victory conditions for the well, let's read them out. Remember, I said it's the decisive victory conditions. So for the Central Powers decisive victory um, uh, conditions, they need to uh, occupy Bucharest. So the Central player occupies Bucharest and three other Romanian cities at the end of the game. Hmm. So there's a few here. I mean, th this is all fortified, so it's going to be uh, difficult. Um, but anyways, there we go. So it's not going to be as easy as, you, as I think, in a sense. Um, the victory conditions for the Entente is control of Bucharest. As far as, well, let's read it out again. The Entente player controls Bucharest at the end of the game. In addition... They need to take two Austro-Hungarian uh, cities. And based on that, so let's uh, zip over here a little bit. There's uh, three of them here. There's Brasov, Sibiu, and whatever the heck you're called. Um, not there. You're somewhere around here. There's Sibiu, sorry. And then uh, Kluji or Kluji. So, or Kluji or whatever. Um, so we've got three three cities there. If I can take two of them plus Bucharest, um, or then uh, sorry, the Entente. As long as they control Bucharest at the end of the game, in addition, the Entente player controls two cities. Yeah. So there we go. Not too bad. Uh, like I said, the Russians are going to come across here. I don't. I'm going to zoom out again to show you a few other wrinkles with the rail. So I've got these little rail bits here. So the Entente can use, um, they can hop off uh, the map edge and then hop back on. And essentially it's uh, equivalent to the amount of hexes uh, across to get back on. And I'm certainly gonna be doing that based on what I wanna do for the Entente uh, and their victory conditions. I'm gonna start swooping some of the Russian troops out of here and bringing them around over towards here. Um, I'm sorry, but if the victory conditions for me is to control Bucharest, I know I'm going to give them a gimme though with one of the, I'm going to give them Costanza, it's going to be a gimme. So that means I only need to get two more um, spots. But it's just the Danube is a monster, monster impediment for um, getting across and I've got in swamp everywhere. I've got a lot of good, it's good defensible terrain. It's, it's incredibly good defensible terrain. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to immediately move all my Romanian troops. Like I said, I'm going to try to keep those enemy zones in control to slow down the uh, the river flotillas because I don't want my river flotillas to be destroyed. But my God, I think they're almost like it's almost like a micro version of uh, what went on with the um, the high seas fleet and whatnot, and you know, getting stuck up. Everybody stuck up there with because they just didn't want to go get jump out with uh, uh, to go against the Brits. Um, up and you know, anyways, I'm getting sidetracked, but I'm gonna give this a shot and see how it goes. Like I said, I want to get a few turns in and hopefully help me uh, get ready for the Paul Hederer interview. That's essentially it. All right, hope that went well. See you later.